Hi, this is Dana from PasswordReset.com. Um, I'm back again to uh, show you how to use the boot device that uh, I've showed you how to create in a previous video um, to remove a password on a machine that you can't get into because you've forgotten that password. So what we're going to do here is I have my uh, laptop here that I don't know the password to. Let me get my glasses on here. And if I go ahead and I uh, go to the login screen, and this is my manager account here, I type in uh, 78910 or well, 0, I suppose, and you know, it says it's incorrect. And I darn it if I, you know, remember right, that's what my password was, but uh, nothing seems to be working. So we're going to go ahead and uh, have to reset that password using our uh, reset disk. So I'm going to hit OK, and it brings us back to the uh, login screen and uh, has a password hint, which, uh, you know, doesn't do me any good. I just can't remember it. So what we have to do now is we're going to take our USB drive that we created and we're going to insert that into the slot to the side here. And then what we have to do now is we need to tell the computer to boot from the USB drive rather than just go back into Windows when we, re when we restart the machine. And to do that, we have to change what's called the BIOS. Uh, some of the newer machines that are just now coming out use what's called a U, um, UEFI instead of a BIOS. And um, this machine doesn't use that, but uh, the newer version 4.5 uh, password reset that we've uh, created, and that's what this disk is here, um, supports that. So just to let you know, this new version is compatible with all those versions. So, um, you know, if you're wondering which version to create, that's the one to go with. Uh, our old 3.0 is still up uh, and it uh, can come in handy for some certain situations like uh, it, has a, it can do a floppy disk for instance for a real old computer and so forth. But we're going to go with the 4.5 and um, you know we're back at our uh, login screen where we don't know. So what we have to do first is change that BIOS I discussed. So to get into the BIOS, this is machine here um, uses F2, which is very common. Um, there's, you know, several different ways to get into BIOSes, um, or the UEFI. You got, you know, F1, F2, F12 for the boot, uh, change the boot order, escape, delete. F2 is probably the most common, um, and if you don't know, you can look it up online usually, look for your, uh, your manual for your machine, um, or just, uh, give us a, uh, um, a con you know, contact us through our uh, page on our website, and uh, we'll be glad to help you out there too, as well, and uh, see if we can research that for you. But uh, and there is a page on our site that uh, covers the BIOS and has some great tips and some video links and so forth on there. So um, anyway, we're going to go ahead, and what we're going to do is we're going to need to reboot the machine. So we're going to go to the restart here, and because I know that. F2 is the key for this one to get into the BIOS. I'm going to get ready to hit the F2 key as soon as I restart. So I hit restart, get F2 ready. And when it says restarting, this is basically the machine shutting down first. So when that goes dark, I'm going to start tapping the key. There I go. And it's immediately going to, you'll even see it down here, say setup. And there we go. So now we're into our BIOS. And you'll see it's our Phoenix BIOS utility. And there's some instructions down here on what to hit to change certain settings and so forth. And what we're going to do is we're going to tab over to the boot tab. And uh, that's what you're going to be looking for on yours because, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ones out there. And uh, they usually use the same lingo. So boot, boot priority, boot order is something that you're going to be looking for. And you notice that our um, internal hard drive is the top um, entry. Uh, that's telling it to you know always go to the hard drive first of all when you first turn on the machine. Well in this case we don't want it to go to the hard drive, we want it to seek out the flash drive. So you notice there's several flash drive options on there. Um, sometimes you'll see like it says USB flash and then there's USB optical drive which would be a external flash drive and you'll see there's a USB hard disk drive. This device here uh, is picked up by this computer as a hard drive. So we want to be sure to make the hard drive, the USB hard drive, the primary boot device, at least above the internal hard drive, which it normally goes to. So we've already got high, uh, number one highlighted, which is the hard drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the minus key, as these instructions down here tell us to. 
to bring that down and I like to bring it down below everything so that just in case you know I think it's going to be the USB optical drive and it happens to be the USB hard drive setting that it needs to be below um, we're already covered and also the internal optical drive which would be the CD drive or DVD drive we'll have it below that in case we needed to say uh, switch to a uh, uh, optical drive um, because the USB drive was giving us problems so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit F10 to save and exit and hit yes and then we're going to wait for it to start up the disk and if you'll notice we're going to start there it goes and that's our USB drive loading on this computer now so we're going to give that a minute to do its thing and then here comes the uh, window screen and we are up and running so you're basically running now off of uh, the USB drive here that's Windows running from that drive and you'll see that it has our logo up here and uh, a quick guide uh, to tell you how to run the software if you're kind of familiar with it you've done it before and you just need a little refresher course or you're kind of like me you're impatient you just want to get it going and you go ahead and uh, go go for the shortest quickest route possible um, but what we're going to do is just take you through it here step by step um, there's also this tools folder or excuse me the help folder here that is a um, it's a f uh, file that has the uh, all the instructions so if you double click that it's a full um, screenshots and everything tells you how to run the the software so you can actually run it and see how to use it from the actual computer you're doing it on instead of having to go back and forth between a you know a machine that's working and this machine so but since I'm gonna explain it to you we can close that as well and all we really need to do is just launch this password reset file here give it a double click and I'm gonna scoot it out towards the middle here and now the way it works is is just like uh, Windows does when you know you turn it on normally it assigns you know a drive letter to where your Windows files are and C is most common so you'll see that the path to the SAM file is C colon Windows so forth um, but uh, depending on what you have inserted like uh, if you have an internal uh, uh, or I mean an external USB drive or printers and things like that hooked up uh, it may assign uh, a different letter and just from doing this before <clears throat> I know that this uh, computer it's actually the uh, E drive so you'll notice that the C drive or letter C is right there and the open button is not uh, able to be clicked so we're not able to get our user list of users under C and it's going to be under probably D, E, F, you know, in that range there. Typically not any further along than that. So what we want to do is we just want to put the cursor there, you know, somewhere where the, near the C. If you do it before, then what you want to do is just delete and then hit delete and then delete the C and then do a D. Um, that didn't make the open button clickable. So now we're going to go ahead and try E. Now because the cursor is after the D, I'm going to backspace and I'm going to do an E. Now watch when I hit E what the open button does. It becomes clickable or active. So that tells us that our files for Windows are on the E drive. So now all I have to do is just use open because it's now clickable. And there they are. So you might have to go through, uh, you know, E, F, G, depending, you know, but um, you're, it's not going to get too much further than that. You don't want to use X. X is where the uh, files are on this drive here. So um, don't, you know, if you're up to the X, there's probably something else going on. So anyway, we're on the E drive. So all we do now is just decide where uh, we're going to, or what we're going to reset. And manager was the account we wanted to get into. We were having trouble, so we just highlight manager. Um, we have enable user is good for a user that's been disabled for some reason and we don't need to 
we're, our, we're just locked out because we don't know the password. So we're only interested in just removing the password. So we're going to just remove the password for that. And then there's where you get asked for the activation key. And as explained on the uh, website, um, this, you know, is all done for free, of, you know, no cost to you to test and make sure everything's working. Um, once you hit this point, uh, we are uh, guaranteeing that, that the software is going to work. So um, this would be the point where we do then require payment. And uh, we do guarantee that it is, it is going to work and uh, everything's going to be good from here on out. Um, we do uh, uh, our guarantee or whatever it has just one requirement basically we just you know we, we we want you to go through all the steps and get to this point to where you're being asked for the key before you purchase because once you do get to this point and purchase the software works it's that reliable and uh, you know it works great so if for any reason you have any trouble uh, then just give us we ask that you contact us because it's usually just a simple uh, you know something that we need to get to the bottom of and fix and it's usually something you know it might be a pro machine that needs the domain changed to the correct you know setting or something so don't panic just uh, let us know and we'll get you we'll get you logged in but for the most part you should be fine so go on um, go to the page passwordreset.com and then the per, uh, purchase link um, you'll see that it's under slash store PHP but there's a purchase link once you get into the website you can just do it that way and then when you purchase your key um, it'll be emailed right to you and um, and then you just put it in here so I'm gonna go ahead and enter the key I'm gonna be a little bit out of range there because I this is the actual key and I don't want to give away the key because uh, you know I so I pay for the you know running my site and so forth so I've got the key in and I hit OK and then it just comes back to here and once you're back to here that means that the Man, the re, uh, password for manager has been reset and we just need to save it so we got save changes and this is a must do you gotta save your changes so save changes and you'll notice it's grayed out so the save changes has taken effect and then after that you just exit so we hit exit and we are finished now all we need to do is just go ahead and reboot the machine and we can use the shutdown button here it's the fastest way to go double click we can do a restart but because we're not using the, the CD version, we don't have any reason to eject the CD out. So we're just going to uncheck that so we don't end up with our door opening for no reason. And then we're going to restart. But before we restart, I'm just going to take out this device so it doesn't start up. Hit restart. And we wait a short amount of time usually. And we're off and running. Now this machine has, uh, it's a what I call a dual boot machine where it's got an extra, it's got more than one version of Windows loaded on it. So it's going to ask me to choose between which one I want to um, load up. So not something you may see unless you're an advanced user and have some kind of setup like that. But So all I do is uh, hit Windows 8. And like I said, you wouldn't probably have that. But then there's Manager. And you notice we just went right to it. No, didn't ask for the password. Just automatically, uh, you know, because there was no password, it was okay to log in. So it just logged in on its own. And that's it. You are now logged in. It's like nothing ever was wrong. Your files are all the same. Everything is the same. There's no difference than before you lost your password. And you just saved yourself a ton of time reinstalling Windows and losing all your data and, uh, you know, just one big monster headache. So. If you have any questions regarding it, you know, please feel free to let us know and uh, we'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, you know, or if you're uh, stuck at a certain point and, you know, just need a little, uh, a little boost with, uh, you know, these instructions or whatever, please let us know. And we will get you going. We want to get you logged in and we strive for that. That's our, you know, main number one concern is get you logged in. So... That's it, and uh, we hope you uh, were able to uh, get something out of these instructions and uh, hope to, uh, you know, see you use our software and, uh, and uh, rely on it anytime you forget your password. So thank you for uh, visiting PasswordReset.com, and that's Password-Reset.com, and uh, you take care now. Thank you.